Welcome to the Enterprise Excellence Podcast, where our purpose is to help create a better future. Learn from our world's experts how to improve your organization sustainably. Learn how to achieve and sustain an excellence journey for yourself, others, and the planet. And I'm your host, Brad Jevons, coming to you from Brisbane, Australia. We are proudly brought to you in association with SA Partners, a world-leading business transformation consultancy. SA Partners are a truly purposeful company focused on helping organisations achieve sustainable improvement for themselves, others and the planet. Hi all. Today I have on the show with us someone I've known for a long time, first working together at Signet on the start of their excellence journey focused on quality. Matt Landers is now an Integrated Quality and Continuous Improvement Manager at Boeing. Today we discuss the importance of quality in an excellence journey. We also discuss how culture can change towards quality. We also discuss how culture change towards quality can be done well and what's important in that aspect. To help with this, we've loaded to the Enterprise Excellence Podcast website under resources, CPR, quality and CI thinking process that can really help with improving quality in a team or organization as a whole. Welcome to episode 146 of the Enterprise Excellence Podcast. It is such a pleasure to have Mr. Matthew Landers on the show with us today. Matthew is an integrated quality and continuous improvement manager for Boeing. Matthew has a large background in improving quality and complex systems. Today we're going to explore excellence and quality, how it is simple yet not easy to achieve. Let's get into the episode, Matt. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Brad. Much yeah. appreciate it. Appreciate it, mate. Good to see you. Yeah, did I. Matt, why is excellence in quality so important for an organization that's trying to improve? Oh, I think it's, it's to do with its credibility, like uh, quality is uh, extremely important for any organization. If you don't have that credibility in your product or your service, uh, you're not going to be around too long. So mm. <clears throat> to me it starts with that, that's, that's why it's very important. Um, but also it cuts through, like it, it affects everybody and so it's not just people who are performing a quality role or quality control role. It's right at the top from the leadership, right mm. the way through the floor. So it's something people can connect with. Um, when they connect with something, um, provides meaning for them. And then um, with that meaning, they understand the why, why they're there, what they need to do. So that's why yeah. I always think it's important to keep it simple. Yeah. And it's interesting too, mate, like you said, like without quality, you're going to be impacting quali- customers and all sorts of things. So there's a massive why to it, isn't it? Like it's yeah. huge. Yeah, I think it's... Um, People get a bit distracted and think it's a little bit more about how things are run, but at the end of the day, people got to understand that if you're not delivering a product or service that your customer's delighted in, um, everything else is pointless. Yeah. So it's always important to ground yourself in that understanding that we're here for a reason and what the customer wants, no matter what we do. Yeah. Um, internally, we're always going to be thinking about how we make it better for yeah. the customer at the end of the day. It's neat. And I guess too, for companies that are looking for that purpose or to bring that more meaning to work, there's such a strong one. but. Like you said, we often miss it, don't we? Like, yeah, I think um, there's a lot of trends that go through, um, people just trying to make um, their own point, but I think you try to got to strip it back, and um, that's, that's why I always feel it's important that if, you, if you're if you leading some area, whether it be an area, department, or a business, or whatever, you just got to really understand the why, why yeah. you're there, um, what, what makes it important for what you do, and um, if you get that right, um, then you're on the right track. Yeah. Um, and then everything you evaluate comes back to that. Yeah. So if you want to do something, how's it going to improve our own performance? Um, I honestly think small businesses have a great deal of more advantage in this area because the product that they're looking at and selling and that, it's very clear when mm-hmm. you get into large organization, um, it becomes a bit more distorted as well what's important. Um, but yeah, always keep in mind, um, you know, at the end of the day, someone's going to have to pay your product. Mm. If they don't, um, then you're not there. Yeah. <laughs> and you're right, mate. Like really, too, when you look at quality, right, you've got the quality of defects in your product, and but you've also got the quality of delivery, don't you? And like, often people split it, but delivering on time is as much as part of quality as anything else, isn't it? And like yeah. all of it just totally can impact the customer in a massive way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think. Um, 
people probably have a traditional view on quality. It's more about the product and the defects and they measure that to the hilt. Mm. Um, but it's also about you know uh, getting on time. Now, mm. now customers do understand that they're necessarily not going to pay for something that's you know the best in class mm. um, if they want it at a reasonable price. Yeah. So um, you know there's a trade-off there in understanding what is the quality that customer wants, yeah. not necessarily the quality that you think uh, needs to be done. Yeah, that's insightful. Quality is quality in the eye of the customer, your customer, yeah. and that's what you need to meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very important to understand that. Um, even in a bigger business, you've got to understand who you actually delivering something to. At the end of the day, you might be delivering it to the end customer mm. that pays the bills, but you're still delivering it to someone else. So, yeah. you know, what do they want, how do they want it, when do they want it? If you're not understanding that, you know, you're going to struggle. Yeah. Right that's really cool because you were discussing there like that internal customer thinking where it could be your customer's the next person in your process and what do they need from me in quality so that I can meet their needs and yeah, yeah, you know, well, serve them so that they can do their great job. Yeah, it's, it's an it's a interesting thing when you start asking people, you know, who's your customer? Yeah. Because um, they might naturally think about the paying customer. But mm. at the end of the day, you've got someone that you need to deliver, whether it be a report or a product or whatever. You're delivering it to them and you need to understand what they want and when they want it and how they want it. Yeah. If you can improve how you do your role and for them, then you're going to improve their own satisfaction. Yeah. So That's neat. That's keep, neat. It, keep it simple, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, I don't know who termed it. I've heard the term before, quality is simple but it's not easy. And I don't know if you, I can't remember who it was. It wasn't Deming, I don't <laughs> think. But this leads me to a, a bit of background on us because you and I connected up based on you being at Boeing and quality and me working a bit in defense and us connecting up to talk. Yep. But through us connecting, I realized that we worked together at Signet a long time ago. Yeah, that was now, a blast from the past. A blast from the past, <laughs> yeah, it's a small world. Yeah. Now the thing is that for listeners, when I met Matt, I've always been astounded at Signet how diligent they are to process. They've always just been rock solid with the way they document process, keep it up to date, train to it, um, improve it, like it's exceptional. And I know it came from your era and before your era you even say, right? But what I want to bring the conversation to is what we and you and I spoke about when I said that to you, like Matt, how did you get that into Signet? How did you get that diligence of process and precision going? Which links a bit to how you make it stick, but do you mind sharing on that? Yeah, uh, look, I don't take any credit for that. I was <laughs> just probably lucky to get into an organisation where it was leader-led. The belief was there, um, they saw a need and, and they recruited myself. Um, it was, I was only 21, so it was new for me, I was learning myself, um, but it made it very easy when the, when the owners of the business, um, they had a vision, they had an understanding of what they needed to do. And um, this was just one part of that you know, mm. wheel for them to go down the path of. So, I always look back on that, you know, in the company I worked before, um, to me, you know, small organisations, awesome um, you know, experience for someone new mm. and um, who didn't have much experience in their belt, coming in and understanding from, you know, go to woe, what the process flow was, and then um, how you contributed to that. And um, really for me, when I went in there, it's just <coughs> understanding what they did. Mm. And the only way of understanding that is to actually sit with the people who mm. are doing the work. And so to me, that was pretty easy to sit with the people, understand how they do things, how they, how they process, what they do, what their frustrations are. And um, yeah, it was very easy from that point of view to be able to um, be in that environment. And to have the support from the leadership at the time um, was awesome because you know they allowed me free range. Yeah. They didn't say, "Oh, you can't go into those areas." Um, they said, "Well, do what you need to do." Yeah. And um, I was at home at night trying to understand what I needed to do because I was only fairly new to the role um, and the, in the whole quality journey. So um, yeah, I think um, I don't take credit for that. I was just lucky to be in that place at the time. Well. And then, like I said, we didn't have much, so to start with something simple was mm. always um, good, and good to hear that they're still going awesome. Oh, it did. It stuck, you know. And, and so often you see quality journeys where I don't know. You, I, I see p examples where people see qualities are pain in the neck, right? And I see examples I where I still have that. <laughs> yeah. And like whatever happened between yourself and Bob and John Winson and the team there, it definitely stuck. But what you're saying Matt, is that a big part of it was that the owners or the most senior leaders owned the journey and led the journey and really spoke to the importance of quality. 
Yeah, well, they, they were definitely people who weren't in their office. I mean, they were out on the floor, they were understanding. If there was a certain issue, like a product issue that came up from the customer, they were down there trying to research and understand what had happened with the product, you know, when we got it back, trying to pull it to pieces. And they wanted to know themselves. <clears throat> they didn't rely on other people telling them what it is. They were always there wanting to understand what it is. So they can see the problem themselves and then they can go away and help try to fix it, either mm. through a supply chain issue or something in their processes. Um, so I think that's very important with any anything, having people there who are generally interested in knowing what's happening, why it's happening, and then more importantly, what they can do to help out, help yeah. it make better. That's neat. And I, I, I know John and Bob, you know, they're salt of the earth people, but to hear that they led that quality journey with yourself in a way that's made it stick, you know, the legacy's held on, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, I think you're a bit generous there. I left um, Signet probably about uh, 20 odd years ago. <laughs> um, to hear it's, it's stuck, that, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges, right? And, and keeping it st uh, sticking, keeping people engaged in the process, people understand what they need to do. Um, so it's awesome to hear that it's stuck. Um, mm. You know, and um, you don't need to say that again. I'm, uh, thanks, Brad, for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I think for myself, mate, I see so many not stick, and when you get one that sticks, it's something to be proud of. Yeah. Now, Matt, we've spoken about two things there I've heard about how do you make it stick. Like you mentioned, you had John and Bob leading it and really partnering with you and being actively involved. And then I heard that language of them being out there at the front. You know, and I guess people call it leader standard work or Gemba. What other elements would you say are really important to take this simple concept of quality that has so much purpose to it, but it's not easy to make it become part of the culture? What else do people need to consider? Yeah, I think it's um, definitely a leader-led, but I think at the end of the day, um, leaders can't be doing everything mm. in an organisation. You know, they employ people to actually do a role. Um, and so it's engaging with the people, and, but engaging in a way that makes sense for them. Like they're not too fussed about I mean, maybe charts or PowerPoints or anything like that. It's just what makes sense to them. So mm. I think uh, one of the keys as part of that is that um, when I went in, I, I didn't know anything about what they did. Um, and now they, they were educating me on what they did. But then by me just asking the dumb questions, because I didn't know what they, what they were meant to be doing, that started them thinking about how they did things and thinking, oh, maybe we can do it a little bit better. Mm. So I think um, definitely when you're talking about leaders led, um, you know, have an interest in what's happening, um, interested in what the customer wants, but also engagement of the people doing the actual role. Um, that's a big challenge because the message sometimes in large organisations gets lost between what the executive want to do and what the people who are actually producing the product or service does. So to have that engagement and understanding of what they do and what their role is and what means something to them. What they want is not necessarily what the executive want. Yeah. Um, so you've got to be able to balance the two. Um, and when the two come together, then you hit the sweet spot. Mm. Um, and like I said, smaller organisations have a great advantage in that respect. There's not much difference, di distance between the two. So I think um, take advantage of that, but mm. don't just think that you're going to push something onto people. You mm. need to first of all understand, I mean, why they're here. Yeah. Some people won't get the journey, but um, that's okay. Yeah. You, know, you don't need to get everyone on the journey. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the people who are the worst people at the start and the most resistance, if you spend time with them, they turn around to be the best. Yeah and the best advocates with the people that are still on that journey. Yeah, it's neat. And I love your discussion on flexibility too, because I, I've studied all the ISO standards and many of the other standards that hang off of ISO 9001 2015 and everything else around it. And there, there's some must haves in there, yeah. but there's also lots of wiggle room for people to create their documents and create the way they capture learning and the way they do that. But I see a lot of quality departments where they just standardize everything to what they want to the nth degree and drive that one path down that seems to often kill people's yeah definitely i think um look there's a lot of uh organizations whether they be certification bodies or regulatory bodies um that in the past have probably thought that organizations need to be told what to do mm. and how to do it um, to a very prescriptive level and I don't know about you Brad but I don't like being told what <laughs> to do so um, you know you see how effective that is and, and so over the years they have matured in that understanding and they are elevating it out to be a little bit more 
outcome focused. Yeah. Not necessarily how you get there, but this is what you need to achieve as an outcome. Um, now, some quality areas are probably still stuck in that and you know, it's been a bit more prescriptive. We've got a problem, we've got to write the process and train people and all that. We've put more control in that. But I always think you've got to, got to step back and see what's the outcome. These standards these days are pretty good. Mm. They're, they're very outcome orientated. And like you said, yeah. um, how you do it is really up to you. Yeah. There's a lot of flexibility there. They're just looking at the outcome. Yeah. And I think um, that's very difficult for some people. They want to be able to be told what mm. needs to be done. But you know, you've got to step back and say, no, they're not going to tell you what to do. Yeah. You're in a role, whatever role that might be, yeah. and then you know use that space in between the left ear and the right ear yeah. to come up with the best way that's going to fit you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of uh, quite excited with regards to even some of the um, regulatory bodies in aviation. I've got a more of an outcome focus now. They understand that it's not about just putting control on people. People are quite intelligent. Um, all here we need to worry about is the outcome. Mm. What's the outcome? What are we here to try, try to achieve? And how are we going about it? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, so I think that's what I just let people know. Just make sure you kind of think about the outcome instead of, you know, writing something prescriptive that someone else needs to follow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think too, the time when I actually read the standards and got to know them, I went, yeah, these aren't telling you it's not like black and white exactly you got to do this and this and this and this no it's especially 2015 and other standards around it. it's just there's a lot of yeah fl- I, think, I think a lot of that comes to education right you know yeah. i think too many people kind of keep that knowledge to themselves yeah. thinking oh, i'm in a quality role that, that's my job you know my boss won't want anything to do with it um, and also, you know, your manager is thinking the same thing, thinking, well, I don't want to get involved in that. That's someone else's role. Um, but I think it's important to have that education awareness. And mm. like you said, when, when people start reading things, it's it necessarily a standard, could be anything. Mm. Um, the education is very important. Once people are educated, it gives them the actual knowledge to actually go and say, well, that's not so bad after all. And then now I know what needs to be done. And then, yeah, that's my role and I'll go do it. Yeah, it's great. But what, what would be your two minute tip, mate? If you were in an elevator with someone going to the 30th floor and they said, dear mate, how should I go about improving quality in my organization? Whether they're big or small, what would be that tip, mate? Uh, I think definitely um, uh, don't try to do it yourself. Mm. Um, you know, involve people, keep it simple, and then don't make it perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Um, and then once you have something in place, then continually improve it along the way. Yeah. That, that's what I'd suggest is that, you know, you've got to start somewhere and you've got to involve other people. Yeah, that's neat. That's neat. And mate, what's been a recent insight for you in recent times of a learning you've had that's really you know, taking you back a bit? Uh, I think um, for me always it's a constant reminder, like, um, you know, I've got a lot of knowledge with regards to quality. Um, and then you've got to can continually remind yourself that the, the people coming through, whether they be just in their first job or in their job at an executive level, um, you've got to spend time with people. And then um, through COVID, we didn't necessarily spend that time. We're on calls mm-hmm. and things like that on Zoom. But when you spend time with each other, you realise that you're only a person, they're only a person, and then you spend time, quality time, just talking with each other and learning what they've got to do, and then um, helping to educate them on it. Um, you know, I think one of the things, maybe a bit old school, but um, you know, a lot of people communicate, message, email and all that, and the message gets lost. It doesn't take much to actually just talk to people, whether it be on face or on a call, and just spend some time understanding who they are and then if you understand who they are then you can tailor your message to those people it's no use trying to tell people what they already know yeah um, you know if they if they've got a lot of experience you know back off and then you know just try to extract that experience out of them yeah um, but other people like to be you know educated and told because they don't know so i think that's the really the insight for me is like sometimes take it a bit take a step back and um, and then just educate the people in what it is all about, and get to know the people. Yeah. You know, um, you know I think um, that's what we've lost in a way. Just that you know human connection. Mm. Humans are humans. We're social animals. We yeah. need to, to talk and interact. Yeah. yeah. And so much is taken in through that visual and that tone and that piece that you can 
mystery technology, can't you? Like, yeah, yeah. And, and I think also it's important that technology these days, um, people learn through different ways. Um, people think, oh, okay, we need to write something down. But a lot of people don't learn that way. Mm. They struggle learning that way. So you think about how you can actually do things. I think um, the other day I was trying to, trying to fix something and you just got onto YouTube. Yeah. And there's no written written text on how to do it. It's just all looking at someone do it. Now that's the way I learn. Yeah. That works for me, yeah. but it might for someone else. But I think it's to tailor, tailor how you get the message across. Mm. Um, I think too many times we think, oh, okay, we need to write it down. And you know, writing down makes it law and makes it something that people understand. Mm. But um, that's not necessary how people consume information these days. Yeah, I love it, mate. I, I really yeah. heard throughout this whole episode this, you know, this whole focus on the outcome, tailor to the individual or the individual team, understand them first, help them come, explain the why. There's a strong purpose behind quality and really, I guess, adapt and adjust your approach depending on the person. And then, I guess, know the standards because there's a lot of flexibility within the standards. Yeah. And, and knowing the standards can actually help you create better outcomes. So. Yeah, definitely. I think it's uh, a lot of these things are in place these days. They're not there to hinder you. They're, they're there to help aid you improve. That's why they're there in the first place. Um, these people don't have a control issue. Yeah. They just want to be able to put in place something that will help organisations. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, I really, I really appreciate it, mate. Thanks for your time and right. thanks for helping us create a better future, mate. How can people reach out and get in touch if they want to? Oh, it's like anything, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And then, uh, or ask Brad, ask Brad. Yeah. Uh, put me on too. <laughs> yeah. Connect in through the website team. Well, Matt, thanks so much, mate. Really right. appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks Cheers. for your time. Time, mate. Yeah. What a great episode. Remember, we've loaded the CPR, CI and quality thinking resource to the Enterprise Excellence Podcast website under resources. This process is brilliant in empowering teams and improving quality culture. There were two key takeaways for me from this episode. Firstly, involve people in a quality journey. Doing quality to people and auditing and policing them is not going to get a quality culture. Engaging and involving people in quality and giving them the empowerment, but also the autonomy and also the accountability to lead and improve quality is critical to creating a quality culture. This links so much to what we've learned out of Agile and best practice lean also. The second key takeaway for me was to lead quality from the top. Now quality is to achieve it is simple but not easy. And it can be not easy because the shadow we cast as leaders is so critical as to whether we'll get a quality culture or not. Being led and owned by the top, just like we spoke about at Signet through uh, the leaders back in the time of John and Bob Winston and how they led it from the front with team members to create a focus on quality and a quality outcome in the culture throughout the organization, which their behaviors and their language and what people saw them do, and also the things they celebrated and recognized, really drove a quality outcome that stuck for a long time. The same applies in any organization. Thanks again for your time and knowledge, Matt. Really appreciate everything you have done and will continue to do, mate. Talk soon. Bye for now.